random countries declaring war on Germany in 1945 so they could say they helped. Gotta see if you can jump on at the very end to see maybe if you can get anything out of this. Wait a second, even Finland did it as well? Wasn't Finland kind of working with Germany for a second? Oh, yep, there it is. March 3rd, 1945. I guess they pulled in Italy. There's also Venezuela, Uruguay, Turkey, even Egypt, Paraguay, and Peru. I like how it wasn't just Germany, though. A lot of them were also going after Japan. Really trying to get on the good side there, I guess. Armies in 2023. We need stealth fighters. Just hope that nobody will see. Meanwhile, back in the day. Give me four buckets of your brightest paint. I want to be seen and feared. Yeah, one thing's for sure, the Red Baron didn't care at all about the whole stealth thing. What a complete Chad move that was. This man painted his plane a bright color and then proceeded to take out 80 other enemy aircraft. Hello, sir. There will be a Poland-Lithuania match today against whom, I might ask? Ah, uh, this classic joke, it just never gets old. Who exactly is Poland-Lithuania playing this soccer match against? Austria-Hungary? Perhaps sweden Norway. Way. Average East Asian fan versus average Central Asia enjoyer versus finally average Indus region appreciator. The other two are good, but not as good as this one up here. There's just so much to appreciate around this area. It's almost like the more further inland into Asia, the more epic and based it gets, perhaps. I mean, come on, Japan and South Korea. What even is this? Kazakhstan on the 12th of December, 1991. I am not in the USSR, Skyler. I am the USSR. They did become the sole member of the USSR for like four days there. Imagine they just decided, you know what, who cares? I'm launching the nukes. Though I'm a fan of any format that is not month, day, year, I now just realized how strange it is to say 1991, December 12th. Oh, that's actually not that weird to say, but I thought it was a lot more weird in my head. I wonder why Kazakhstan didn't just decide to keep the epic name, keep the flag. You know, you don't have to come up with new lore or anything. Humans for a hundred thousand years just focus on hunting and gathering living in small tribunal communities. Meanwhile, humans, after noticing that plants grow from where the seeds are thrown, uh, all of a sudden, ancient Sumerian gets spoken. It's also time to complain about, um, uh, bad, what was that called? What was that bad review? Yeah, I always forget the name of this. It's a complaint tablet, uh, from the city of Ur. Literally history's first one-star review. We've been doing that for 4,000 years. The US and UK arguing over who fought the most on D-Day. Meanwhile, we have the Germans who were present on all five beaches. Yeah, little known fact, I think that the Germans probably fought the most on D-Day. They were literally involved in all the battling. Who would have thought, yo guys, come to the trenches. We have Silly String and a Party Wagon. Also, fun puzzles as well as spicy wind. Fun fact, it smells like mustard, kind of. Man, oh man, do I love fun puzzle games. Trying to figure out exactly how each country is aligned. Ooh, let's talk about medieval fashion. Nice dress, she says. Hehe, <laughs> thanks, it's silk. Wow, very nice. Meanwhile, in Japan, let's see those gums. Oh, wow, very nice as well. I think. Apparently, gum blackening was a popular trend in medieval Japan. Sorry, just their whole teeth in general, not just their gums. Interestingly, it's actually practiced all over Asia as well as Oceania, even in places like Peru and Ecuador. There is a very good reason to do it, though. Apparently, it preserves teeth, just to avoid teeth decay. I mean, if you think about it, centuries ago, there weren't, like, dentists out here running around. Maybe it's a good investment. I'm gonna look into it myself. Let's stop wasting time brushing my teeth every morning. Ah, here we go. Just a normal servant on his way to Austria. Gives this piece of paper to a French border patrol. Simply says, passport, King Louis the 16th. Uh, just a normal servant on his way to Austria. Uh, kind of reminds me of like a bathroom pass that you get in high school. It's always the most random object, like a shoe. He actually did try to leave during the French Revolution and he was caught pretty quickly. He was trying to act like just a normal servant, but um, that's not really what his paperwork said. Well, regardless, it's no reason to lose your head. Napoleon the third in fiction. LMAO, I'm a poopy version of Napoleon the first. Meanwhile, Napoleon the third in reality, I highly industrialized my country, made numerous reforms, integrated Savoy and Nice in France, intervened in the Crimean War, made Paris the city we know today. One thing's for sure, Napoleon the third definitely comes up a lot historically. He did definitely make an impact. He is a bit outshined by Napoleon the first though. Kind of hard to live up to that guy. Maybe if he actually managed to conquer all of Mexico, he could have gotten close. That ended up being just a total disaster though. Rare image of King
King Charles' army rose from the grave to take back Russia's Baltic coast when they discovered that Putin is using the 17th century map as proof for Ukraine's non-existent world history. Russia's Baltic coast was righteously Swedish clay at the time. Yeah, Sweden was definitely not to be messed with back in the 17th century, that's for sure. I mean, here's literally the Russian Baltic coast they were talking about. That's all Swedish lands. I'm sure Ikea and H&M could really use some new headquarters over there. What other Swedish companies are there? Spotify? Hmm, today I will go fishing in the North Sea. Here we are, clueless. Would you look at that? The Russian Baltic fleet, what are they doing all the way out here? Suddenly, the 1907 Dogger Bank incident occurs. Oh, we don't talk about the 1907 Dogger Bank incident here. Pretty interesting skirmish that took place between the British Empire and the Russian Empire. All pre-World War One stuff, too. Apparently, Russia has problems with, like, boats and stuff. They find it pretty complicated. The British Empire ruled India for years. Now, they currently have an Indian Prime Minister. Meanwhile, the Turks ruled over Greece for years. And now, well, uh, yeah, you can see where this is going. I guess he originates from a region of Turkey with a lot of Greek ancestry. Then again, I guess a lot of other countries are also claiming that uh, he could be Serbian or uh, just a lot of things. <laughs> countries Kosovo citizens rate as favorable. We have Serbia at literally 3%, Russia at 5 uh, China at 17 Turkey at 91 the EU at 93 the UK also at 93 percent Germany at 94 but overall it is the USA I think they really like Bill there don't they yeah they are uh, pretty giant fans to say the least so it's literally called Bill Clinton Boulevard yo guys we just found a new Pokemon evolution we have the bow and arrow which eventually evolves into this thing which I'm not gonna pronounce and its final form is a catapult I mean just look at it it is a giant bow and arrow then there's another one we also have have a sling which turns into again another thing that I'm not gonna pronounce and finally the Charizard of the sling is actually the trebuchet I had no idea this Pokemon evolution has been in front of us this entire time and just like most true Pokemon evolutions no one remembers the middle one or can pronounce the middle one's name I feel like I can like remember what they looked like but not really anything else medieval army camps and movies got a solid 10 hours in my double king-sized bed cool I have same one versus medieval army camps in reality my tent was washed away the first week never had one yeah it's not exactly like camping for fun a lot of times they were probably just sleeping out in the dirt probably more likely to not make it because of that not even in the battle most peasants didn't have much Ooh, look we have the Eiffel Tower in in Paris and the Palace of Culture and Science in Warsaw both agreeing to be passionately hated at first but over time becoming too recognizable to dismantle okay I definitely remember the Eiffel Tower was not popular when it was first released I mean if you were just walking down the streets of Paris and you'd never seen this thing before it would look kind of ugly no is that is that not right to say it does seem a bit strange like out of all the things in Paris this is the most iconic for me I've always really liked the Arch de Triomphe whether I can pronounce it or not meanwhile here's the Palace of culture and science in Warsaw, Poland. I mean, it does look a bit strange. Maybe not as strange as the Eiffel Tower, though, that's for sure. I feel like I can kind of see why when they first rolled out with it, maybe the people were like, what? Yeah, part of the problem is it's like communist architecture, but that just has like a whole nother thing behind it. It really just goes to show you, if you're like a city trying to build an iconic structure, just build like the weirdest thing imaginable. Like, look at the city of Seattle with their space needle. It literally just said, we're gonna build basically a spaceship. Meanwhile, put it on some twigs. No, no, Germany losing both world wars. The British winning both world wars. Imperial Japan win one but lose the other. The Italians switch sides in both world wars. Sweden being neutral and helping both sides. <laughs> then there's Switzerland being neutral and attacking both sides. Finally, there's Iran who declares neutrality but have your land be invaded in both wars by both sides. Yeah, how exactly does that work? They're probably thinking they did Iran dirty. Completely forgot about just how unlucky Iran was during both both big conflicts. They was out here just trying to chill, but no one let them. The battle of this forest. Three of our legions were wiped out. All our settlements east of the Rhine are now gone. Yes, and the survivors will be sacrificed to the gods. Meanwhile, after the battle, Germanicius, uh, please stop. I have captured two of the eagle's standards back and even captured your wife. You can never stop me as I'm always three steps ahead of you. Gotta have that wife bargaining chip. Oh, here's the battle of that forest right there. The Punic Wars fought between 264 BC and 
146 BC, will never surrender, moves through the Alps like a boss. Cut to randomly 1985. You know, we never formally ended that Third Punic War. Want to sign a peace treaty? Sure, that would be awesome. Pretty interesting because both these two places, Italy and Tunisia, had quite the rough history after that moment. Well, I mean, the Italians were basically going to be Rome for a couple of centuries. But yeah, they were going to break apart. The Italian Peninsula was going to be super splintered. Tunisia was going to be conquered by all sorts of Arabic empires. No wonder they forgot about it. Like, there was just so much other chaos going on. European country starts work on important building project. Random Roman floor mosaics. Uh, yeah, that's just going to keep on happening. Especially if you're in Rome. You can't dig anywhere in the city of Rome. They're always going to pop up like this. Roman lands conquered by Germanic tribes versus Germanic land conquered by the Roman Empire. Oh, 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 oh. I guess they do kind of have a point there. I mean, this was all of the Roman Empire at their height, and here obviously were the Germanic tribes. Rome would obviously end up falling, especially the western side, and pretty much all to those Germanic tribes. What's hilarious about this is then the Germans turn around and call themselves the Holy Roman Empire. How exactly does that work? You were supposed to destroy the Sith, not join them! It's like what the ancestors were saying. Ooh, the Chad Argentinian Navy versus the Virgin Russian Navy. Argentina in their first war in over a hundred years goes up against the ruler of the waves. Successfully protects their flagship, actually manages to damage their enemy in battle, knows their equipment's trash, doesn't care, refuses to continue wasting their ships and the life of their men, knows when to withdraw. Meanwhile, there's Russian who keeps feeding the scrapyard and the cemetery. Flagship gets yeeted by shore battery, tries to disguise it as an incident, stays as far away from the battle as possible, gets pummeled anyways. LARPs' world power fails. Never thought I'd say that Russia could really learn a thing or two from Argentina, I guess. I just like the realization that they totally said YOLO and decided to go up against literally the ruler of the waves. Found themselves in a naval battle against historically one of the strongest naval powers of all time, if not the strongest. Rare Argentina dub. And big thanks to my patrons. I am the kidnapper and I've moved Drew to a Patagonian um, village. Australia is real. Drew's I'm not a paid Argentinian actor. Grandpa. The slow depressing Drew Portugal Dornel collapse. Colorblind. Asher, 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 Asher,